welcome to this video which will be about data visualization and how you can present patterns that you discovered in data sets um, to be presented in graphs um, that technical or non-technical people can quickly parse and understand what is happening and what the data actually means. So for this tutorial I'm going to use the Enron email data set to quickly go over how emails can be presented to or how you can use emails to identify social networks with employees or people who are using the email okay and this can be presented by graph visualizations so the Enron email data set is a real public data set that consists of yeah as I said real data and it's from about 150 users who were mostly senior management of Enron which is now shut down through corruption um, and the corpus contains a total of 517,000 email messages nested in 3,501 directories and 148, 49 people. So I have already downloaded this data set. You can, of course, download it from... Uh, just start typing to Google Enron email data set and you'll get the website. So once you download it, it kind of looks like this. Again, there's 448 items. I've slightly changed the structure of the data set as I was kind of working on it and as you can see these are all individuals and inside each person's directory they have a list of uh, mailboxes or no, sorry not mailboxes directories inside their mailbox so let's go and look for this person he has you know, quite a few mailboxes here and as you would expect there's an inbox and inside the inbox there can be a nested directory or there's just one to n emails and inside each email as you would expect is the uh, headers of the email plus the message body and these can be short like this or they can be kind of long with lots of forwards and replies forwarded on and they can be to you know as you can see it's from Gary to Shelley or it can be from one person to um, a huge amount that completely varies in each email as you would expect so you're probably thinking, right, he's got uh, 150, sorry, 517,000 emails. How can you visualize and identify social networks within these people and present it to someone who has no technical background in the form of this graph? Well, the first thing you want to do is, is you want to extract this information out of the log file format and then you want to transform it into your kind of domain model validate it to make sure it's all correct information and then you're going to store it in database so you can use a relational database or you can use a no sql database whatever you prefer whatever you're comfortable working with and from that sql database you can then of course parse the database you can query the database or whatever you want to do with it to extract information very fast very efficiently so what you really want to think about, you know, I'm not going to go over here and show you the code that I've wrote for this because that would spoil it for everyone else. But what you really want to think about is in this message, say for example, this person has a mailbox. If he sends it to, you know, this person, obviously it's a, you know, it's a distribu distribution uh, email, so it's not going to go to this mailbox, but it's going to go to all these each individuals. If we look, and if they all have mailboxes, they're going to have a copy of that in their inbox, while this guy also has a copy in his inbox with two completely uh, duplicate emails in the data set. So you're going to want to completely remove these duplicate emails, because if we store it in the database, we know each one of these has a copy, because we're going to have a one-to-many relationship between the sender and each recipient. You're also want to going to validate different you know, timestamps, make sure everything's valid, there's nothing corrupt in the data. And again, that's completely up to you how you validate your data. But what you want to do is I have chosen uh, just a uh, MySQL database and I've designed it so that the email message has a one-to-many relationship with the email recipients. And then we have a, again, one-to-many relationship with the duplicate email messages. So, as I said, if we're going through and we're parsing, once we extract one email, it has, say, 20 recipients. If we come into one of them recipients' mailboxes and they also have a copy of that email, 
We're not going to re-put it in the database because we know they have a copy because they're on the recipient list and we're going to store the reference in the duplicate email messages. So um, once I finished that, I had 255,000 um, original email messages and the rest were duplicates, which matches uh, very, very closely to MIT and a very other uh, numerous universities. Um, I can't remember them on the top of my head, but very, very close match in their parsing. Um, you're probably thinking, you know, how can they, you know, match emails directly because each of them has a distinct message ID. So this was not included in the match. So what you want to do is perform a, some kind of hash function in all the data and all the different fields and the main body and then compare it. So each time you store an email in the database, you're going to do maybe a lookup or have an index in that field. So you can't insert duplicate data. Um, so again, once you have all that stored, you'll then have an amazing, wonderful database filled with all of this information, all this extracted information, which I have right here. So these are the cropped email messages. They're ones that, you know, have invalid time stamps, that kind of thing. So once you have the email messages, you're going to have to identify um, the email addresses used by each employee. So this... This, whereas, this is where it gets tricky because you can't just look at the sent header in each email message because they could frequently delete the messages in their sent box or they may be emailing other employees from their personal email accounts which you also want to measure that communication because we're not going from corporate emails we're going from social networks between the people who work in the organization so what you want to do is uh, write a good regular expression and run it through the whole data set and pull out emails so you can have a kind of a fuzzy email of regex or you can have you know a very strict one that is very you know this is definitely their email address so you could have that based on you know their surname and different combinations of maybe the first character of their first name things like that while uh, the fuzzy one might be, you know, a portion of their surname or portion of their first name. Maybe if you can identify any middle names there, plus any sent ones from their specific mailbox. And once I finished that, I had I think it's about 700 email addresses mapped to 150 employees. So quite a successful um, operation there. And now you have all the emails in the database and all the email addresses mapped to each person. So now, once you have that information, you can then parse through or, you know, go through all the data in the database and map edges and nodes between people and their communication. So each employee will be a node and each, so obviously, you know that a node looks like one of these and each time an employee has a communication with another employee we're going to draw an edge and if the edge already exists then we're going to increase the thickness of the edge to represent obviously more communication between employees so as you scan through the database you collect all this data and you put it on your data structure of your choice so you can have different map variations you know maps and maps or whatever you feel is the best. I don't know, you might even try Scala, for example, use some of the data structures there. And once you have that, you then um, want to put that um, data structure into an XML format that can be rendered by a graphical uh, visualization tool, such as Gephi, which is open source beta project. So graph XML is an example. There's lots of other types. Um, so for this example, I use graph XML. So the data got transferred into XML. Um, there was a bit of a problem with, uh, since it's the beta, there was a bit of a problem with it understanding. So I had to write some string manipulation methods to manipulate the XML produced. And then you can open it up in your visualization package. You are presented with when you transfer the data structure into graph XML and open it in your visualization package. 
So this really doesn't mean anything at the moment. So what you want to do is change your layout to a nice layout. So it dynamically shuffles them about, makes them all more understandable. And again, you can manually move them if you want. But we'll leave them as they are. And what you want to do is stop that. And you want to turn on the edges. Sorry, the node labels. So we can actually see the different people. And this, the graphical visualization package is fantastic because it dynamically uh, shows you the social networks between people as you hover over them. So as you can see, Susan Scott has a lot of different um, friends, as you want to call them, or people they would communicate a lot with. And you're probably wondering, what, what do the colors mean? Well, the colors actually are represented by um, their job. So as you can see, the president is orange, CEO is red, managing director, and so on. Different colors. So you can see if a CEO is emailing, say, a, a lawyer a lot, you know, or maybe a basic employee is emailing the CEO lots. Maybe there's a bit of suspicious activity there. I'm not too sure. So it depends on your scenario. But it means you can see John, who's the CEO, you can see his networks. And again, Louise, you can see her networks. So you can quickly go over and identify who communicates with who. And again, the bigger the edge, the more communications. So Jeff would message a lot with Richard. And he would also message James and Stephen. And as you can see, they would have quite frequent communication as well. So there's these uh, nested kind of circles of social networks in the organization. And from this graph, you can then export it as um, a static file, which looks like this when produced, which is a beautiful graph, which again can be presented to anyone to display communication between employees. So you may not be able to understand all these edges, but it gives you the general overview of the organization and who kind of communicates with who or what stands out. So I think in the future I may actually make tutorials of step-by-step -step guide showing you the code, showing you how to parse it, showing you everything, how this is actually produced. And again, this is produced from emails, but this can be produced from anything, any kind of communication between two people that stores logs, so lots of emails can be used to generate these social network detection um, graph visualizations. So um, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, just drop me an email. You know, this is something that I love doing. It's something that I have very much loads of fun working on. So I'm happy to answer any questions.